Hi guys, John here. Electricians need to know. Today I would like to talk to you about a toolboxes. The toolboxes that sit in the bed of your trucks. Now, I've been an electrician since the 60s, so I've had my fair share of toolboxes getting broken into, vans getting broken into, um, and just general uh, spare tires being stolen, things like that. So I've done over the years a few things uh, to protect my pickup because I usually have a pickup, I usually have vans and I have uh, truck bodies uh, that are toolbox bodies and I've protected those over the last let's say 20 years just because I learned the hard way uh, by not protecting my van. So I'll show you a few tricks uh, the how to protect your tools in your toolbox. Okay, now there's my toolbox. Okay, as you notice, it's flush with the top. So the reason it's flush is when you drive when you drive by the street and you notice my truck in the driveway there is no sign of a toolbox okay so that works the other ways I have to protect my box is high-resolution surveillance cameras uh, there it is okay one of both sides alright now, as you notice, there's a big floodlight right there. And over to the side is a motion detector. So anyway, there's the motion detector. Now, that's a good motion detector. The, uh, when you step into the driveway, you get up to this mark about right there when that concrete that motion detector says, oh, that's too far, and turns on the light. Now, if it's past midnight, the lights inside the garage will come on. So I have that on a little timer that works. Okay, now let's get to the box. As you can see, it looks like a regular box. I, I've had it in several different trucks. It goes all the way to the ground. It's a big box. It has... Uh, quite wide and it like I said it goes almost all the way now if you set this box on the ground or on the bed it'll weep water when it rains or when it gets wet and it'll suck water into the box uh, especially when it rains a lot so I elevated the box I put it on two pieces of Unistrut underneath the box to elevate it because I still had clearance at the top to clear it. Now you can see the lid isn't very straight. Well there was big foam under the lid so I cut the foam out of the front of the box and tapered the foam on the side of the box so the lid would set uh, lower in the front than it does the back. And I added this bar. And this bar uh, is a deterrent You have a padlock there, and and it's through the, the front of the frame. Of course, if you don't like drilling holes in your truck, uh, I wouldn't put padlocks in it. So we have two padlocks there, and both of those padlocks have to be removed uh, in order to get that lid open. Now, we have a little lock out here in the front. This lock is to protect the lock and handle that opens the box. So, uh, we'll unlock this thing. And as you can see, this little apparatus is something that I've built. I've built it for two or three other trucks over the years. And it's a little, a little awkward, but pretty good size lock. This funny looking thing is something that I made. So 
So there's your handle and there's your lock. So you unlock this lock, unlock this lock, get this, get this off the front. Now these are just two little hasps that you can pick up at any store. This is Unistrut. You can buy pieces of Unistrut. You can build this for about 50 bucks uh, worth of material and uh, you have to spend about 35 bucks to have this thing welded up. Uh, used to be able to weld it up because I had my own welder, but I don't have one now since I sold the business. So anyway, you've got this lock, these two locks, uh, and then you have this lock to open this toolbox. Okay, you notice there's a... Uh, you notice there's a little rivet at the top and four rivets at the front. Now what that does is it holds a magnetic lock inside the truck. The, uh, there's a switch inside the truck. The magnetic lock is inside the toolbox. So in order to open this door, you would need to turn off the switch for the magnetic lock. Either that or put a hydraulic jack under the lip because it's a 600 pound magnetic lock and uh, 600 pounds is more than you can develop uh, just by pulling on the lid. Okay, so let's open this box up. Okay, so we have the we have this gizmo off. I don't even know what you call it. A lock protector. This sets right in front of this handle. This sets like this once it's locked up so you can't move it. This little tab here sets in like this above above that lock, so it can't be drilled out readily. And then it's welded up like you see, so it can't come apart uh, without cutting it apart. So, and these regular hasps are bolted through like that. It's a pretty simple little extra lock. Doesn't look that great. Uh, you could paint this, make it look better, but it, it's functional. Uh, once you see the bar, this, it may be difficult to get in the box. Now, open this thing up. All right, let me get the camera. As you can see, it's a pretty deep box. There's the magnetic lock. Now this lock down here with a cable, if you have toolboxes, you can put the toolboxes in there and run that cable through the toolboxes. So even if they get in the box with uh, killing the alarm and killing the lights and uh, defeating all the locks, uh, they still have to defeat one more cable and one more lock here uh, because it's tied to the box itself through uh, the handles of the toolboxes. Okay, now that being said, we've got a battery, a relay uh, base, and we have a relay here. Uh, that relay plugs into the base, and then it's and there's a fuse that goes in there. And uh, when I have this, there's a limit switch. So if you pull the lid up, the limit switch goes off. The uh, siren goes off. What the siren is, it's a uh, ambulance, uh, police or uh, ambulance siren. It's pretty loud. And then the uh, LEDs, of course, light up and give the burglar uh, or whoever's getting in here plenty of light to see with. So anyway, there's the 600 pound magnet and it does have a armature uh, bolted into the... Now, there's a bolt in there. The bolt was just to uh, wait until the epoxy uh, hardened. So now the bolt doesn't really do anything. It can be drilled out and you still don't uh, lose your magnet. Because it's uh, epoxied in there to that aluminum uh, lid. And also we have another armature over here that uh, works on this little limit switch. So, those are some of the items uh, to protect the toolbox. 
Okay, that's how to secure your toolbox. Um, making this is pretty simple. I've got uh, I've got a bunch of Unistrut here that I bolt together in different configurations. Uh, you can pick this up at the Home Depot. Once you get it bolted together in the right configuration, sometimes you have to cut off these logs or drill out these holes. But once you get it, uh, you lock down these graded bolts and then you mark where you want it to be welded and where you don't want it to be welded. And um, take it to a weld shop or if you have a welder you can weld it up yourself. So anyway, uh, I saw a little video on how to make this. Uh, also on that video is electrical schematics of how I wire the alarms, the relay, so when you lift the lid, the alarm picks up and it stays up for about two minutes and then it shuts back down. Uh, the lights come on for two minutes also. So uh, I, I think that's enough time to get other people interested in uh, why that alarm's going off, especially in the middle of the night. Okay, so uh, shookelectric.com, we sell that little video. Now, uh, I did mention earlier that I, I put chains around my spare tire, and uh, I have one chain around the spare tire, but that chain also goes around the frame and has two padlocks on it. One's pretty inaccessible up into the frame. The other chain is on the other side of the spare tire, and I'll show you a little video of it uh, at the end of this. So, uh, that's another chain, and it's chained around the frame with a lock uh, that's inaccessible above the tire. And then the chain drops through the frame, it drops through the uh, rim, and it's locked. Uh, right under the rim. Now the chain is a little softer than the padlock so the only uh, thing that's accessible there would be the padlock and it padlocks hanging right under the rim. So that's two two locks actually there's four locks on that uh, spare tire. Okay you think that's a little overkill. Okay maybe it is but I also have a combination starter on my truck it's very simple to do, it's very simple to put in, but you have to push a button, some kind of button, and I can make it almost any button you want. Uh, the rear defrogger button, the, the uh, floodlight button, if you have floodlights, uh, or fog lights, pardon me. Uh, there's all kinds of little tricks that you have to turn on in order to get your starter to engage, and that's a very simple little trick I've used that for about 20 years uh, in my trucks, so you can't just put a key in and start it. So if somebody takes my keys, uh, finds the height of key if there is one, um, they can't just simply unlock the truck and go. The truck won't go until you push these combinations uh, to engage the starter. So. That little uh, trick is on the video also. The, and it's, it's a simple thing to do. Uh, you just need uh, to know how to do it. And uh, that video sells for 10 bucks, like I said, at shookelectric.com. So uh, I hope this helps you protect your tools and protect your truck. Shook Electric here, uh, shookelectric.com. Thanks for watching.